I'd like to do is give you a demonstration of the Sheriff's long-range acoustic device. This was uh, purchased in 2007 and delivered in 2008 from the 2007 Homeland Security Grant Program. And the purpose of the device is to give announcements during states of emergency. Uh, fires is a good example. We need to broadcast emergency messages out to a group. But uh, real-time application, day-to-day, -day, we've assigned it to our search and rescue unit with the hope that they would be able to direct messages into some of the East County canyons and mountain land where they're out searching for lost or missing people, broadcasting messages specifically to those folks to uh, attempt to identify them, locate them. And so what do we have or how does this work? Well, essentially what this is is just a voice amplification system. And I'll get Sergeant Don Parker from our search and rescue unit. He will uh, start the device and we'll do a demo for you. Okay, on this particular device we have in English and in Spanish an announcement that was prepared for the Sandcastles event in Imperial Beach in July. And what it, what it is is a general announcement in English and Spanish to the attendees at the beach that the event was over for the day and to leave the beach. And we broadcast that at the end of the day, Saturday and Sunday. And we had that saved on here as a WAV file. This device will allow you to do that so you can prepare your statements you need to make as long as it's a planned event and make sure they're clear, concise, understood, without background noise or interference. And then when the time comes, you simply play it. Do you have that one on there for us, The Sand Castle event is now over. Please clear the street and the event area. We'll play in Spanish as well. El acontecimiento de Castillo de Arena se ha terminado ahora. Por favor, desaloje la calle y el área de este evento. You're approximately 20, 25 feet in front of the uh, device. And we have it set into the, the low end on the volume control. And it has an adjustment for volume, and that's the volume to broadcast out. And it's always a consideration in applying the device. So even though you were fairly close, turn the volume down, it could be used. But as you turn the volume up, of course, it's going to get much louder. So you have to take into consideration your subjects that you want to uh, receive the announcement. So always with that in mind, because this will go up to 140 decibels, and it can get a little bit loud. So we, uh, we always weigh that into uh, consideration when we apply it. What's been your reaction when, uh, like you said, the sandcastle? But we got really little feedback from the public. They simply, I, think, I would assume, took it as a public announcement, and their response was what we expected. They, they gathered up their things and left for the day. But the feedback from the law enforcement personnel over there was very positive because it, 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 it took that time that they would spend going from location to location, making personal notifications out of the loop. So then you can concentrate at that point would have been really traffic control, making sure that the people getting back to the cars were able to leave safely. And it was a big hit both days. Can you talk about, too, the difference? You, I guess you use a microphone normally, but now this is narrow and more projected. Is it more long distance? We, we do have some megaphones in inventory, but those would be kind of incident driven. This is almost used for planned events. Now, we can take it out, like I said, and the intended purpose under the grants is for emergency applications. And in that circumstance, you wouldn't use the, the control box that's on there. It has a microphone attached to the back, and you can do a direct feed. So if you're making a, an announcement that may be specific and time-sensitive, you can do that just as easily. Just switch it over to the microphone and make your announcements. And I apologize. You probably said this before I got here. I was one of the late arrivals. The beauty of this thing is it's, it's non-distortion. I mean, a megaphone, you know, you sound like you're a jack-in-the-box, but right. this thing, it, it really comes out clear. Huh? It has a great degree of clarity. The, the considerations then are that you don't want a feedback loop. If you're broadcasting and you have objects in front mm -hmm. of you, it will tend to come back and get some uh, feedback and harmonics, but that's with any electronic device. Also another consideration, where you're broadcasting and the environment. Uh, that will also have great impact on how far you can reach and then how the, the quality of the... The broadcast and and just how would you use it in a search and rescue operation really there's a lot of different functions but ideally in an area where you have canyon land like we have behind us somebody who might be down that's not able to get up and maybe not able to hear but they can make some noise this has a, a, a bit of a focus with the volume so you can adjust the volume out for the, the reach and then the area you want to broadcast and make announcements if you can hear my voice you know, bang two objects together and just kind of feel around the area until you get a response and narrow down that focus for search. 
and this canyon behind us is fairly small, but if you can imagine some of the, the hilly country out in East County, it would really, really benefit search and rescue. And that's why we have assigned it to our search and rescue unit. Hmm. They're the primary operators. They've been trained on how to use the device. And when it goes out, as it did in Sandcastles, it was operated by the search and rescue unit. Was there some sort of controversy about this from some of the public or from somebody in particular about the device? The, I, I, I don't know. Was the there or was there? On, on this particular yeah, device? Yeah. I don't think this one's controversial. It uh, has a maximum range, as we, we heard from the vendor, of about 140 decibels, which is on the high end, granted, but in those circumstances where you needed to reach out beyond 1,000 feet and have it clear, you need that. That's a tool. That's a, that's a valuable asset. Uh, limitations like that would kind of, again, limit the use of the, of the device. So, again, it's always a matter of where it is you want to broadcast and who you want to reach. So is it possible that it could hurt someone's eardrum? Oh, absolutely. Any, any device that amplifies sound, uh, there are definite precautions on this. Um, the maximum, there's a, you can see in the center back, there's a volume control. When you get into the red area, the maximum area, the manufacturer recommends not having anyone in front of it 75 meters. So we're talking about 200 feet. Wouldn't make an announcement at that range. And then you also have to consider where those people are. If it's a single individual, easy enough, but if it's, a, if it's a group of people you need to make an announcement to, then you have to gauge how far away the nearest person is and then, again, the furthest person, if it's going to be effective at all. So then you're pretty well trained on it. And you have to have a lot of considerations taken into that here. Interesting. LRAD test, one, two, three. LRAD test, one, two, three. One, two, three. LRAD test, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is the test of the LRAD system, one, Two, three. That's good, right? And I'm not going to yeah. go any further with people in front. Right. Although, if you go to a rock concert, you're... If we... Uh, so if how we, much to rent for parties? If you, if you went down to Imperial Beach to the Sandcastles event, the length of the event, which was a couple of hundred meters, the, the beachfront, I talked to the sergeant yesterday who used this device down there, and he said they never had to get beyond essentially the level where you were just a moment ago as we got to the highest point and you re the reach was across the beach. So it, it will get out there. It's just a matter of the obstructions you have and where your targets are that you want to, to hear your message. It's pretty effective. One of the things Ron was asking you about, and I, the ACLU put out a statement about this because it's military and background, but there's lots of stuff you guys use that's military and background. I mean, I mean, depending on how you use it is the big point, right? I mean, the application is the key, certainly so. And in fact, on the manufacturer's website, um, it, it has different categories for application. One of those is marine, but if you look under the marine subheading, is search and rescue, and that kind of piques our curiosity because while they might use it to look for people lost on the water, just change the water with, with ground terrain and you have the same application. You're trying to find people at specific locations at distances that you can gauge with the device. It's a, it's a perfect fit for us. So you're, you're a big fan of this product. I like it.